when it comes to wiring any race car built using a production of fuel injected engine, there's three ways you can go about it. You can take the car with no wires at all to an experienced auto electrician and have them make up from scratch a purpose-built wiring loom for you. But that's not a cheap exercise. If you've got the factory wiring loom from the donor car, you can just use it yourself unaltered. The trouble with that is that some things won't be in the same place. And so you end up with some wires that will be too short, others that will be too long, and stacks of unnecessary stuff. Or you can take that factory loom, lighten and simplify it by removing what your car doesn't need and adapt it to suit your car's new layout. The risk is that if you stuff it up, you'll have to take it to an auto electrician to sort it out. But really, the more you do, the more you save yourself anyway. My limited budget on this one-man build means it's the third option that I'll be taking. danger in cutting down a factory wiring loom for a, a buggy is if you only cut one wrong wire you can end up with an electrical nightmare that will take you quite a lot of work to solve. So you can really only do this job if you've marked everything properly on the loom before you start. So for example this plug I marked when it was on the car near side driver's door. That would contain the electric windows, uh, the electric mirrors and the uh, courtesy light in the door. I know I don't need any of those on a buggy so I was able to cut that plug off, trace all those wires back and pull them out of the loom. Here's another illustration, ABS pump and all the wiring that goes with that. I was able to cut that out of the loom because I'm not using the ABS. So if you're ever going to do this before you start cutting the loom and ideally before you take it out of the car Make little labels and mark everything. That way you know what to keep and what to, you can cut off. And the golden rule is when in doubt, leave it in the loom. The other thing you'll find fairly early in the piece is which wire is the earth. In this factory loom, it's a black wire and uh, that's illustrated by the fact that when you take all the wrapping off, it's not insulated at the joins. So once you find that colour-coded wire, sometimes they're brown and so forth, then you know that you can just trim those extra leads off that you don't need as you go. To work out where this stripped-out engine bay wiring loom needs to go, I need to first of all go back and position the loom where it used to run in the factory setup. Then I can work out what I want to change and what has to be where the factory placed it. Key to this are the photos that I took of the car with the labels on before I removed the engine and before I removed the wiring loom from the car. These now enable me to lay out the wiring where the factory used to run it. When this engine sat in the front of the Magna or Diamante as they call it in America that I took it from, the radiator was up there, the firewall was back here this is where, from the photos, I know the engine bay fuse and relay box used to be. I'm going to take this run of wires, which used to go back behind the motor and through the firewall. Instead, I'm going to push it forward through that way. And this run of wire that goes around three sides of the engine into the fuse box and relay box, well, I'll put, 
I'll probably mount the fuse and relay box inside the driver's compartment as well and instead of this long run of wire like this I'll probably run the wires across there which means I'll shorten that whole loop I've got the electrical components laid out approximately where they need to go I'm going to mount the fuse and uh, relay box about there I've got the connections to the airflow meter and the fuel injection comes back down along there to the computer I'll use that rubber boot to go through the firewall probably uh, and then I'll come up here to a little magic box I don't know what that does <laughs> the ignition key and its its reader I'll put that in the side there the fuse box uh, for things like lights and stuff like that which I'm, I might pick up and use some of those circuits I'll mount that in there so that'll be protected by the bonnet and kept away from the mud the OB uh, onboard diagnostics tuner plug will go there and then I've got two runs of wire coming down here this one goes to the, the uh, fuse box and you can see it's it's just miles longer than it needs to be so I'll cut that and join all that and this whole set of wires here I think the only one in this that I need is that little sucker so probably the rest of those will go because they all come to dead end joiners and wires that I've cut going to tail lights and stuff like that there's the crap that I've cut out of the loom so I'm getting close, believe it or not, to being able to position the components and uh, really sort out the, the wiring and make the wiring loom neat and fasten it in place. When you're shortening a loom, don't just cut straight through the wires because if you do, all your joins will be in the one spot and you'll end up with a really big bulky uh, joining block. What I'll do is I'll stagger my joins up and down here to spread them out to avoid that happening. I've taken out of the wiring looms the things that I don't need and I've adjusted the lengths of the looms to fit the car. I can now check myself by making sure that the components I do need wired are indeed connected, like the alternator, the main engine fuse box, which I've got to mount there properly, anything to do with the engine, which has been labelled, the inlet manifold there, the airflow meter, fuel injection wiring, throttle body, all of that comes back through here and runs down and up to the computer which is there I'll mount that in a plastic box on the inside of the bodywork the fuel pump wiring that's where the fuel tanks going to go so the fuel wirings coming down there got to tidy up that earth the onboard diagnostics plug there the magic box which I don't know what it is there and the uh, non-engine fuse box there there's the ignition key and its reader and it's about there somewhere that I'll, um, I'll mount that so you can see that the wiring fits the car now like I said I've got to tidy it up and wrap it up again once the car starts but that's the bulk of the wiring done